You know, Jesus' teachings of nonviolent love of friends and enemies, and all his teaching, they're about life. Life. Real life. True life. Life that, that, that starts in eternity and goes to eternity. Life that we can be filled with. You know, you think about it, and, and, and any one of us, any one of us, every one of us, my perhaps was a better way of saying it, every one of us is either here, right here now in this place where we are, by only one of two possibilities. Either it's by sheer accident, some place over billions upon billions of years of time and space, atoms and subatomic particles bang together, and here we are by accident, no purpose for us being here, just, just getting through the day till we can't get through the day anymore, and then we are no more, just like we weren't before the particular combination of particles came together. We're either here in existence, you and I, by accident, or, and there is only this one other choice, by gift. By gift. Because what we know for certain is that we did not bring ourselves into existence. A hundred years ago, and for a thousand years, and ten thousand, and millions, and billions of years before that, I was not here. Nor were you, I don't think. But I am now. And that being the case, that means existence is a gift. It's not an accident, but if there's a gift, there has to be a giver. There has to be a giver if there's a gift. And if there's a giver, the giver has to have a purpose. The one who makes a human being, the one that makes the universe, the one that draws me out of existence, doesn't do this by accident. Helter skelter, kind of hairy, scary. There's a the giver. The giver of the gift of existence has a purpose. And that giver gives me the tools to search out that purpose. He gives me the tools in the sense of the kind of brain that he gave me. A brain that has a neocortex. That is, a brain that can search for truth, can search for what is and why it is. And so everyone, absolutely every one of us, has thought about the question, why am I here? Where did I come from? Where am I going? What should I be doing? These questions, these questions, which all human beings have, all human beings have, can be pursued only by seeking truth, the truth of the answer. That is, what we come to after the search as to why I'm here. For the Christian, those questions, in truth for the Christian, those questions are answered by Jesus. You are here because of the gift of God. You are here because of the gift of God that gave you life. You are a Christian because of my gift to you of faith. I chose you, you didn't chose me. You are here to participate in the salvation of the world, and in your own salvation. You are here to participate in 
the healing and the resurrection unto eternal life and happiness of all of humanity. And how do you do this? For the Christian now, the truth is, by following Jesus, God incarnate, the creator of all things. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing would have been made. And the Word became flesh. Jesus is the creator of the universe. He knows why we're here. He gave the gift. And so the one that gives the gift comes to give us another gift. Tell us how to show us the truth about how we should live in time and space so each and all of us can enter into eternal life. And how does he tell us to do this? Well, he tells us to do this by following him, by loving as he loved, by taking his teachings as the truth, not only of time, but truth from eternity that lead to eternity. A truth that is not going to save the United States or Great Britain or Russia, but truth that is going to save every single human being. And so, we have received a gift. We have received a lot of gifts. We have received the gift of existence, the gift of faith, the gift of knowing the truth of how to live. And finally, we received the gift of knowing that what, what awaits is eternal life with God, the resurrection. Therefore, There is a certain rash, rationalness, there's a certain logic, there's a certain inescapable truth that you do not choose the lesser over the greater. You do not choose the temporal over the eternal. Jesus comes and tells us, I give you the gift of eternal life. Follow me. His, follow me, meaning follow his way of nonviolent love of friends and enemies. Nonviolence is not about fundamentally politics. It's not fundamentally about strategies, but tactics. It's not fundamentally about being a nice, decent person in your society. It's about following Jesus unto eternal life and bringing others to follow him unto eternal life. We do not have to do it in our freedom. But the fact of the matter is that what we're offered is the gift to do it. Not just for ourselves, but for others. All others who were given the gift of existence by God. We can accept, we can reject the gift. But Jesus' way of nonviolent love of friends and enemies is a gift to each one that he chooses as a disciple. And through them, a gift to all humanity, past, present, and future.